Hello everyone, this is Ed Hammerly from NJ Renewable Energy. I've already produced a video that you're going to see on the tail end of this segment uh, regarding a sort of a walkthrough, an initial size up of my uh, aquaponics system here in my home. Uh, but many people don't understand why you would have such a thing. And we'll start off by first discussing, I guess, the American standard of, of our food culture uh, that we have over the last 30 and 40 years. And that's a food system based on a, on a lot of processed foods, which we know are not good for us. Uh, a system that's also based on a high uh, sugar content. Lots of foods that are produced with corn-based things and high fr fructose corn syrup. Uh, all these things have created uh, an epidemic of diabetes and obesity in, in our culture. So we need to go back to eating predominantly fruits and vegetables. And even doing that, even going to your store now and buying these things, what we thought may be a great thing, uh, may not be so great. Because we've come to find that a lot of the food, a lot of the fruits and vegetables that we're eating are covered in pesticides. Um, they're covered in preservatives. Uh, they are genetically modified organisms. They've been changed in order to assist in farmers uh, whatever task or whatever issues they're, they're dealing with. For instance, uh, Monsanto is a company that produces a, a chemical, very dangerous and deadly chemical, called Roundup. Uh, this you can use on your grass, on weeds, on any planting. You pour it on it, it will kill it. Well, our scientists are, are creating GMOs that basically help the plant survive or they're unaffected by, by this chemical. So think about this. We're eating a food that normally would die from having a poison poured on it, but we've tweaked it in order to, for it to live so that we can have no weeds and other things around it. So it's something very, very disturbing and something that absolutely and drastically uh, must change. So that's, that's one, uh, one reason. So in addition to fruits and vegetables, another great source of food that's healthy for human consumption is fish. Uh, but unfortunately, much like everything else in the world that we live in today, uh, the industrialized world is devouring and destroying things in its path. And much of our oceans, whether they are being destroyed by climate change, are also being overfished. So many of the, of the populations of all the fish that we eat are near collapse. So, again, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but the good news is, again, with aquaponics, we can have vegetables, fruits and vegetables, 365 days a year, and we can also have our own fish where we can feed them organically. All right, so the, the two examples I just gave you are a great reason why you may want to consider some type of uh, sustainable growing uh, at your home for fish and for plants. Uh, but ultimately, I think the biggest reason for aquaponics is at the commercial level. Uh, first off, the amount of water that is used for, for uh, aquaponics growing is typically about 98% less water. So if you apply this to California and the amount of water that they're using and that the issues that they're having in Southern California because of drought, uh, this could, is a game changer for them. To produce plants and uh, fruits and vegetables uh, with 98% water would be significant to say the least. The other thing, the, another great uh, reason to do this and why it will become uh, a very common thing in the next 10 years is that you can grow food locally. This idea of shipping fruits and vegetables in airplanes thousands and thousands of miles when you can grow something locally. Via aquaponics, you can grow it in a warehouse. You can grow it in a city. You can grow it in Antarctica. You can grow it at the equator. You can grow it anywhere people live. You can have fresh fruits and vegetables and fish and be within walking distance of that location. And, and that, in my opinion, is a game changer. So I hope you enjoy my video. I hope it inspires you. And thank you for your time. Hi, this is Ed Hammerly from NJ Renewable Energy. If you know anything about my YouTube videos, you know that I um, am very much into sustainability and I get into great detail as to how things work and why I did the things that I do. Um, but for today, I'm just going to go into or go do a, a quick overview of my entire aquaponics system here that's located in my basement. Uh, it should be known that uh, this system actually runs on my home, so in addition to, on the, on the solar system that we have on the roof, so in addition to providing us with food, plants, and fish 365 days a year, we're also supplying that energy uh, from the rooftop. So, okay, so here we go. 
This is the, the uh, I'm going with a media flood and drain system for now. There are different types of systems out there. Uh, vertical, float, uh, floating systems, but for, 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 for now, for these purposes, we're starting off with a media flood and drain. Here you'll see the media that I'm using is called Hydrocorm. Uh, it's, it's certified and ma made for hydroponics and aquaponics. Um, very, very good product. Um, you'll see here down at, at, towards the back, we've just started to plant some uh, different types of things, different types of vegetables. We're, we're growing some of our own by seed. Um, some we've already planted and others, for instance, the basil in the back, we have purchased at your local organic market and we just got these things going so that we have the systems functioning. We want the filtration system for the fish to be online as soon as we can, but as we expand and get things going, we'll be planting things here very, very shortly. Okay, so let's take a look at the fish tank. This is a tank that I built myself. I would have actually preferred a round tank. However, because it's in my basement, uh, I wasn't able to get anything down here that would fit, so I built this here. It holds approximately somewhere between 500 and 650 gallons, somewhere around there, depending upon how, uh, how deep you, you, you uh, fill it, how high the water is. Uh, you'll notice now the water's a little bit brown. It has a little brownish hue to it. Um, this is because we added, about a week ago, some seaweed, and, and that is to for the purposes of get, uh, of uh, giving nutrients to the plants. It's a, it's a method that was recommended by Aquaponic Source in their cycling system that, we per that I purchased. Um, you also notice, look, there's a little brown at the bottom. This is actually some of the remnants of the, of the grow media. I did my best to uh, wash it off prior to, to putting it in the beds. However, if you're not as thorough as I should have been, you'll get a little bit of, of the um, of the residue into the water. It's not going to hurt the fish, not going to hurt anything. As a matter of fact, I had a little, uh, I found a little way to sort of vacuum the bottom of this and we'll get the rest of this up soon. Uh, but for now, that's what that is when you see it. Uh, this is our heater. Uh, these are white and blue tilapia. Uh, they're uh, the, the, the breeds of tilapia that are um, that can handle the coldest temperatures, which is why I purchased them. If I was in Hawaii or California or had an outside system in, in a southern climate, uh, we would probably have something different, but these are very, very hardy, can handle the temperatures, and we're gonna maintain this tank somewhere in the 60s, uh, high 60s, low 70s, something like that. Uh, now it should be known that tilapia, as far as breeding purposes, want the water to be you know, over 70, so if and, if and when that time arises where we want to ha breed them, we may r uh, raise the temperature. Uh, but for now, for energy conservation purposes and the breed that we have, we're gonna maintain that 60, 70 area. Um, okay, so let's go right to here. This is just a little strainer that I have here. This was, is not required, but I installed this so that on occasion you'll get some media slip through the system, through the bell siphons if things aren't, um, functioning exactly the way they should be when you initially start. The other thing I like is, heaven forbid you have something in the system that's not supposed to be there, plastic shavings or, or whatever it is. Whatever, whatever shouldn't be in the system during the construction phase can be filtered out here so that that doesn't wind up in the, in the water supply and here in, in the tank. So we'll go over to this side. You'll see we have a temperature gauge for floating temperature gauge to always find out, know what our water temperature is. And this is our pump. This pump is a 800 gallon per hour pump hooked to a food grade hose. Again, I can't say this enough that when you're building a system like this, which is based on health and healthy fish and healthy plants, uh, you have to go the whole uh, nine yards and build it to food grade and organic standards. If, if you're not doing that, you're somewhat defeating the purpose of, of doing this in the first place. So I see a lot of people out there who have buckets from Home Depot and using things that are not meant for, for food grade purposes. And um, you, you may be endangering your welfare by using things that are leaching into the water supply. So okay, so we're gonna follow it this way. This is the supply to the grow, the grow this is where the pump is pumping the water to the grow beds. Uh, we'll stop right here. Make sure you have your system running on a GFI outlet. Uh, would be obviously extremely dangerous to have water and electricity this close together, but, but with these systems, heaven forbid you do something accidental or stupid, you won't kill yourself. 
So this supply line then comes to here. This is a solids filtration. Again, food grade uh, six gallon uh, spackling bucket, or it's not a spackling bucket, but that style. Um, the water essentially comes in the bottom. I'll go into greater detail in another video. Comes up, forced back down. Solids go to the bottom. Water uh, continues onward. All the solids from the fish tank, the solid uh, fish poop that you don't want in your grow beds will uh, basically collect here, and then you clean it out from over there. Again, you'll know, learn all about that on another video. So it goes this, comes this direction, comes out to our, our grow beds. I'm actually gonna cut these back. These will be moved within the next uh, week or so. We're just gonna move this so that the water is flowing from all the way from this side of the grow bed, and then draining on that side. Not the end of the world, but we're just gonna uh, clean it up a little bit. So here you have some different things growing. This is watercress. This is an ex excellent product or excellent plant, uh, not only for human consumption, but also the fish will, as they get older and bigger, will eat this. So you have, you basically can offset some of your costs of feeding the fish by something that you're growing on site. So you have a complete system here. This is the same thing. I just actually trimmed it this morning and fed it to our chickens. It'll grow back in a couple days or you know, a week or so. And anyway, this is all different things here. We got some cilantro, some kale. We're really just winging things here for now. This will be a lot more organized and, and set up better once we sort of get, uh, figure things out here and get a better understanding of how things are gonna work. Uh, we'll go back down this direction and show you, this is a bell siphon. This is what's creating the flood and drain system. This is just a weight to prevent this outer PVC pipe from lifting and, and, and settling down and rising up, letting some of the rocks sneak in under the bottom. I found that if you put some weight on it, it prevents that. Here's a bell siphon. This is what, this is the system that, that, that creates this flood and drain. Otherwise, that the water would just go down that standpipe. This bell siphon will create a vacuum and have the water completely empty out. Again, not a coincidence that this isn't a regular zip tie that you'll see people in other systems have. It's stainless steel, um, it's food grade, it's the way you should do things. All right, lighting. Um, I can't say enough about this lighting system. Again, being someone from the renewable energy business and sustainability and energy efficiency, uh, these things piqued my interest for two reasons. One is because the quality of light, the light spectrum that they provide is excellent. Um, and the other thing is that they're, they're I sh actually I should say there's three things. It's also price. Uh, they're they're um, reasonably priced relative to LEDs. They are very, very efficient, similar to LEDs, and again, the light spectrum is awesome. I will go into greater detail at another date. This uh, is an LED, it's called a pontoon. This is the Indigro 420 lights, but with the pontoon upgrade. These are just on, just for the purpose of showing you. You would have these on only for plants that are blooming, flowering, so forth. We're doing leafy greens. It's not, not something we need right now, but I, I have it on just to show you. What else do we have here? Um, this is again just some of the plants. These are actually carrots. I bought uh, fully grown carrots out of the store that had the bottom of the carrots still had some roots. I threw them in here and they've been uh, really bounced back here and have been doing well. It's not something we're necessarily gonna eat right away. I just really did it so that we can get everything functioning here and we're gonna, we're gonna pick our own leafy greens and, and, and be on our way. Um, I like to have this board keep myself, um, you know, there's so many things that you have to keep track of. It, it, it can be somewhat overwhelming at first, but as you get the feel for things, it actually becomes pretty uh, simple, I suppose. But these are the parameters for what I wrote down are the optimal parameters for aquaponics, whether it's pH, ammonia, nitrates, nitrites, water temperature, uh, nitrifying bacteria. Uh, um, dissolved oxygen, so on and so forth. I have my temperature gauges for the air, pH, uh, my, my color code for my water testing when you're testing all these things. And ultimately, a little hard to see here with the reflection, but these are probably a handful of the, of the things that you're gonna be thinking about, and I will go and do videos specifically to each one of these things. Uh, what type of, you know, the fish that you use, and what type, and what size tank, and so forth. The fish tank, how to make it, what works, uh, how many gallons, grow, the grow bed tank, again, the grow bed tank slash container, um, 
sizes, styles, it, it, your head can spin in a lot of these things. There's just so many things to learn about. The grow media, uh, grow bed media, what to use, uh, the, what type of piping, uh, building or not to build a solids filter, what type of pump, what kind of grow lights, type of system that you're going to build, a media, float, or vertical. And then when you're talking about heaters and timers and everything else, um, it might be easier to get a PhD than it is at some points to build a an aquaponic system, but it's crucial that you do it the right way. Again, I see tons of people out there that throw stuff together and it seems very simplistic. And when you're doing things, like I said, using using tubs that are not made for human uh, consumption or for fish, um, it's, it's really something you shouldn't be doing. So anyway, I hope that was a good insight to what I'm doing here. Please follow along with my new videos that are going to be coming along when I get into great details. And if you have any questions, concerns, comments, contact me anytime on YouTube. Thank you. Want to learn more about solar thermal, solar PV, EV charging, green building, chickens, sustainability, and more? Contact me or visit me at njrenewableenergy.com. Thank you.